Last week, the Young Jedi Adventures gave us our first on-screen look at some of the characters and locations of the High Republic Publishing Initiative. Loden Greatstorm, Bel Zetafar, Ember, Estala Maru, the Nile, and Starlight Beacon. So who are all of these people, and what happens to them in the books? Certainly nothing horrifying, right? Right? First, I just want to say how much joy I felt seeing the High Republic era continue to expand. I have loved the books and comics and everything that's released over the past two years. Seeing some of them come to life in animation was really special for me, even if I do have the cursed knowledge of where these characters are headed, but hearing Bell and Loden speak, seeing ships flying in and out of Starlight Beacon, that on its own is neat, but the show used these characters so well and in ways that were consistent with what we know from the books. I loved it. Okay, let's start with the dream team team of Bell, Loden, and Ember. Loden Greatstorm was a fantastic Jedi. He was easily and quickly one of my favorite new characters when the novel Light of the Jedi kicked off the High Republic era. He was a great master to Padawan Bell Zetafar. I mean, I think he was great. Some people might take pause at a teacher who would push their students off of a cliff so they could learn to save themselves, but whatever. Loden's awesome. We don't know a ton about his life prior to the Young Jedi Adventures, except that he was the Jedi who cut down the violent droid revolutionary Ajax Sigma. As I mentioned, Bel Zetafar was Loden's Padawan, and he is also one of my favorite High Republic characters. It's tough, because when I start thinking about my top picks of the era, it's hard to leave people off that list, but Bel is definitely a character I can't wait to read more about every single novel. He has such a great moment in Light of the Jedi, where he learns the lesson his master was hoping to teach him by pushing him off of cliffs, that your power as a Jedi doesn't come from saving yourself, but from saving others. He exemplifies a lot of what I love about great Jedi characters. He was probably my favorite inclusion in the show. Seeing how much Kai Brightstar looked up to him was heartwarming, and I love that Bell had to use the Force to save Kai from falling, which is exactly what Loden had to do for him on multiple occasions. It was a nice bit of symmetry. Which makes sense, because High Republic author Kevin Scott wrote the episode. In the books, Bell was often accompanied by a charhound named Ember. She was a dog-like creature that lived on the planet Elfrona, where Bell and Loden were stationed. As the name implies, charhounds had a high internal temperature and, like we saw in the show, could breathe fire. What we didn't see in Young Jedi Adventures was the fact that even a charhound's urine was hot enough to light things on fire. It's probably best they left that out, but Ember is great and is basically an honorary member of the Jedi Outpost team on Elfrona and has followed Bell on his many other missions across the galaxy. It was delightful seeing Lys, the creature lover of the Young Jedi Adventures, interacting with her. Moving on to Estala Maru, he was the head of operations on Starlight Beacon. That was a space station built by the Republic on the galactic frontier in a time where much of the Outer Rim was still unexplored. It was a communications relay that could help guide travelers, but also had a Jedi Temple on board and was mobile, able to offer aid to any planet in need. As the head of operations, Jedi Master Maru oversaw everything that happened on Starlight Beacon, assisted by his droid KC-78. He worked alongside the Republic's own head of operations, Rodor Keen, and they both answered to the marshal of the space station. But just because he had a desk job didn't mean he wasn't capable in combat. When the Dringir infested Starlight Beacon, he sprung into action to defeat them. So that's who each of these characters are, but what happens to them in the books and comics? I will throw out a spoiler warning here if you haven't read through Phase 1 of the publishing initiative just yet, because it is in stark contrast to the lighthearted and fun tone of Young Jedi Adventures. A group of marauders called the Nile resist the Republic's growing presence in the Outer Rim. We actually see a couple of Nile in the episode An Adventure with Yoda. At this point, they're more of an underestimated nuisance than a real problem, which grows worse and worse under their leader, Markeon Roe. During one of their raids to Elfrona, they capture Loden Greatstorm, and he is presumed dead. For an entire year, he is held captive, tortured, and mutilated until the Jedi are able to track the Nile back to their base. Loden is rescued and reunited with Bell in a wonderful scene, but but then Markeon unleashes his secret weapon on the Jedi, a creature called the Leveler, a Shrieker Ray or Eater of the Force, which is able to suck the life energy out of a Force user. That's what happens to Loden, and he is turned to dust, which is of course insanely traumatizing for Bell. Another year or so later, the Jedi are doing their best to keep up with Nile raids and attacks, offering aid through Starlight Beacon, but the Nile infiltrate the station and release several Eaters of the Force on board. They start feeding on the Jedi, causing absolute chaos, while the Nile sabotage the station, sending it towards the planet Irem. Estella Maru dies defending the station, literally holding it together with the Force for as long as he can until it explodes into two pieces and falls into the sea. 
So, yeah, the second they announced we'd be seeing all these characters in Young Jedi Adventures, I was psyched to see them on screen, but I also started imagining the young kids who might come to love them all and want to know more about them and then read the books and see their terrible fates. Bell is still alive at least, but he has gone through a lot, and thank goodness Ember is okay and she had better stay that way. But I think it's also worth pointing out the consequences of the Nile attacks and the destruction of Starlight Beacon. Obviously, that all happens well after what we saw in the Young Jedi Adventures, Adventures, but when it does happen, it causes the Jedi Council to recall every Jedi back to Coruscant and reinstate something called the Guardian Protocols. One of their mandates is the acceleration of youngling combat instruction, and we see another set of younglings from a children's book go through exactly that, so I think it's safe to assume that Kai, Liss, and Nubs might experience the same thing. Do I think that will happen in the actual series? No, not really. I think Young Jedi Adventures will probably stay on the planet to new and continue to give us a happier look at the High Republic era, you know, before everything was on fire. But a comic or book might mention the younglings being promoted to Padawans at some point, and I personally hope Kai Brightstar winds up as Bell Zedifar's student when all the dust is settled. That would make me very happy. But that's it for today. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel for all our High Republic coverage, follow us on our socials, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As as always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.